Hi everyone, this is Lino from Trading Edge. In this video I'll look at uh, May's situation and uh, I'll make a forecast about Bitcoin in May. To begin with I forecasted that the bottom will be on the 29th of April and I said from there on I expect a very strong bullish momentum. My forecast was two days off the mark. The bottom was on the 1st of May. There are always bearish events happening on most days. So what we had on the 1st of May is that um, Venus square to Pluto. And uh, it was also day number five in the cycle between one and nine. So those were two bearish events that have contributed to Bitcoin dumping low on the 1st of May. However, the bullish events were much more. Mars entered Aries, Venus entered Taurus on the previous day, on the 30th. That is why I assume that uh, when these two planets enter their home territories, uh, the market will pump and the market will be happy because those two planets, some of the biggest drivers of price action on the Bitcoin market are very happy now. Mars in Aries and Venus in Taurus. And when we look at the 29th of April, 29th of April was much more bearish because it was also bearish on the solar eclipse uh, metrics. I used three metrics of assessing the solar eclipses. And uh, according to them, the 29th of April had a bigger historical occurrence of red candles as uh, day number 21 of the solar eclipse. And uh, Mars uh, conjunct Neptune, that had 67% probability of closing on a red candle. So. I was uh, pretty confident that with all of those uh, probabilities in place, because uh, bit, uh, 29th will be a much bigger dip and a certainly a red candle. The reason why I trusted uh, so much my solar eclipse um, metrics is because I have counted their accuracy for all of the days in April. These are, their, these are their forecasts here in these columns. I have explained in my previous video why I use three different metrics and what they are. And I will cover them in detail in my next video when I report only the results of the solar eclipse uh, cycles, backtesting. So all of those metrics gave me the following accuracy. 63% the first metric, 68% the second metric and 62% the third metric. So based on that performance, I kind of trusted them uh, that uh, the 29th of April will be a red candle day. What I discovered since then, as I'm the kind of person who doesn't get any peace and any rest until I figure out uh, what, or what my blind spot was for those dates. What I found out is that uh, in some systems, in somebody else's system, that was the last day of visibility of Venus, the 29th of April. And then it makes sense that it will be a green candle day because the visibility is all, always a green candle, is always positive. And then going into invisibility is a negative event. I work with, I work with visibility of the planets as well but uh, I assess visibility with a wider orb of uh, the conjunction with the sun. Visibility is a metric which uses the conjunction between a planet and the sun. The closer it gets to the sun, the more invisible it becomes. And the further away it moves from the sun, the more visible it becomes. So I use a much wider angle, a much wider orb of the conjunction between the planets and the sun and my wide orb that I use gives me very good results 
but uh, I'm going to report them at another time. My point is that uh, while my system works, because according to my system, I actually sold all my Bitcoin on the 13th of March, just one day before the top, that I, I made that decision on the grounds of visibility. That was one of the factors that participated in me making that decision. Venus became invisible in my system on the 14th of March. Much wider orb. The orb I use is 13 degrees of orb uh, between Venus and Sun conjunction. Whereas this colleague of mine, he uses a much narrower orb but this is a serious uh, bullish event and for that reason he didn't manage to bring the market down on the uh, 29th of uh, April. Despite the fact that we had that bearish conjunction Mars and Neptune. My, by the way that conjunction took place very early in the morning. So I should have taken that into account that once Mars has passed Neptune uh, then uh, the market will resume its bullish movements. Anyway, what's been done has been done and uh, it helped me to uh, push me to do a bit more research. Every time I get things wrong, I just uh, increase the depth of my research. I also discovered here a uh, nasty bearish uh, event on uh, the 30th of April, which is the square between Mars and Pluto. I did know about it before, but uh, I kind of uh, underestimated it because there were uh, many bullish events on the 30th of April as well. As for the 1st of April, why the market dipped was because Venus made a 90 degree angle to Pluto. I had the 1st of April as a red candle, by the way, and in my previous forecast I said that uh, it's kind of shaky the 1st of April. As for the 2nd of April, we have uh, a recovery. It's not an extremely bullish day, but uh, it has better, better events than uh, the 1st of May. And uh, very often we assess the performance on a given day in relation to the previous day. So if the previous day has that bearish aspect, Venus 90 degrees uh, uh, squared to Pluto, and we got no bearish aspect on the following day, then the likelihood is that the following day uh, the prices will be higher. 3rd of May, I had 3rd of May as a red candle. And in my opinion, 3rd of May is one of the bottoms in May. And I see it today as a, red, as a green candle and uh, it makes sense. One of my metrics on uh, the solar eclipse is uh, showing it as a green candle. Also the, the 3rd of May historically has closed on a green candle 69% of the time, which is a very, very uh, high occurrence of green candles on 3rd of May, historically. Uh, yeah, we have also Mars uh, sextile to Pluto, which is a very bullish event. It's an event which supports the price. It's not necessarily a green candle guaranteed, but it's more of a case of not dumping very low. And we had some other bearish events today, Moon conjuncting Saturn, day number 7 in the cycle between um, 1 and 9, day number 7 is bearish a lot of the time. I agree with Gunn completely that number 7 is a bearish number. Uh, and then it's also lunar day number 25, so again the 7 is resonating here, 2 plus 5 is 7. And uh, Lunar Day 25 is a very reflective and very uh, slow day. Things are moving very slowly on um, this Lunar Day. 
So I really didn't expect that today we'll be closing on a green candle. In my assessment, today the market is a lot more I hate when this picture appears. I don't fucking know how to get rid of it. So now I have to open this page again. I have to log in probably as well. So I can find my chat. One second, please. I'm so sorry about that. I had it open. Wow. Hallelujah. Typical day number seven. It just infuriates me so much. Everything has to be slow and slow and slow. Ah, what do we have here now? We have a red candle today. Thank God for that. At one point I was looking at it today and it was a green candle. So I thought, what did I get wrong again? I'm getting very confused now. This is 3rd of May and this is 3rd of May as well. Oh, because my time frame is wrong. Why am I behaving like Mercury is in retrograde? Give me one day time frame. Now. Okay, okay, okay. So on a daily, today the market is pumping. I did not expect this pump today. I really didn't expect it. Clearly this candle closed with a big lower uh, week, low week, which means that the next day will be green, but I'm not um, doing a technical analysis here. If we have to go just by the technical analysis, look at that, we've got a castle in the sky. This shouldn't be going up at all. If this is going up, this got nothing to do with the technical analysis. According to the technical analysis, we should be dipping now to 51k. So, what has happened today that is pumping the market today? It's a day number 7, which is a bearish day. It's a lunar day 25, which is a bearish lunar day. Two of my metrics on... Um, On the solar eclipse is uh, forecasting red candles closure and only one of them is forecasting a green candle closure. So it's not completely out of the question. Okay, this is the explanation so far. The best explanation that um, I can see is that today is day number 50 of the cycle from the top. And uh, number 50 is the number which changes the trend so depends where we count the top from if we count the top from uh, 13th of March then today will be day number 51 and yesterday was day number 50 which makes perfect sense because uh, the market changed the trend yesterday if it has we don't know yet, but for the moment it looks that way. Day uh, number 50 is a bullish day. Day number 51 is also a bullish day. Day number 52 is the big test of the new trend. So according to that logic, the market should be dumping tomorrow the 4th of May. Historically, the 4th of May has closed on red candles 61% of the time. On the solar eclipse cycles, we have likelihood of uh, green candle closures 
This is day 26 of the solar eclipse, of the, from the day of the solar eclipse. But a much bigger cycle is uh, the gun cycle, counting the days from the top in order to spot the trend reversal. There are so many numbers that are discussed by Gunn. I counted uh, 45 days. That was 28th of uh, April. So that should have been the bottom. But 28th of April was bullish. So for that reason, had more bullish events on the 28th of April than, uh, than uh, 29th of April. That is why, uh, although it closed on a red candle, I didn't expect that it will uh, dip very much. And that's why I forecast it one day later, the 29th of April. Uh, because these numbers have a little bit of a degree uh, of uh, accuracy. It doesn't have to be exactly the exact day. So. The gun numbers at the moment are providing the best, the best explanation why the 3rd of May today is pumping. If today is pumping, then it is very possible that tomorrow will dump to perform the first test of the change of trend. And from there on, we have uh, the 5th of May, which is a bullish day in my system. One of the most bullish events this month is the meteor shower. Meteor showers tend to be bullish on back testing. Uh, it's taking place on the 5th of May, and this whole month of May is uh, actually full with meteor showers, one after the other on many, many days, beginning from the 5th of May. So just for that reason alone, I expect that the 5th of May will be a green day for Bitcoin. On top of that, we have Perigee Moon. This is when the Moon is closest to Earth, which means that uh, it will impact humans. And where will the Moon be? The moon will be in Aries. It's also lunar day 27, which tends to be a bullish day. So, there are several bullish events, uh, esoteric bullish events on the 5th of May. To suggest that the 5th of May is likely to be a green day. However, the solar eclipse cycle is contradicting that the solar eclipse cycle, one of the metrics on the solar eclipse cycle is predicting a red candle for the 5th of May and uh, it's uh, predicting green candles for the 4th of May. So it's mixed blessings. It's very difficult to find a day which is straightforward green or straightforward red. So for that reason, it's better to look at the month instead of daily time frames. To look at the direction, where we're heading right now. And the easiest way to understand the direction and to spot the direction is look at uh, the most vulnerable days first. So, in my opinion, as I said, this patch of days here, this group of days, the 3rd of May and the 4th of May, have vulnerability and then the next days which have vulner vulnerability at the 10th, 11th and 12th, particularly the 12th of May, is looking as a very vulnerable day in my system. It has the same element fire repeating twice and then we are also in the month of the snake which is a fire element so we have three elements fire repeating on the same day. And according to the Chinese system, when we have a repetition of the same element that is out of balance and the day will be unsuccessful, therefore red. So if tomorrow Bitcoin doesn't dump on the 4th of May, as I expect that it would, 
The next possible day when it will dump is the 12th of May or maybe it may start from the 10th of May and the 12th to be the bottom. Then the next patch of days which look bearish are the 15th to 17th of May and from there on the majority of the days will be bullish days. So in comparison to April May is panning out to be a very bullish day, particularly from the 18th of May onwards. And uh, it's looking that it's going to close higher than April, that it's going to be a green candle month. The question is, are we going to have a big dip that dips all the way to 50k? Uh, because that is what the technical analysis is suggesting, that uh, a further dip is pending before we can bounce off in a more sustainable way and uh, if that will happen in May I expect that to be either on the 12th of May or the 17th of May in those uh, sections here between the 10th to 12th of May and the next one is between the 15th and 17th of May we want to be in long positions before the 18th of May because 18th of May kickstarts a series of bullish events one after the other and it's panning out that uh, that week between the 18th of May and 25th of May to be an exceptionally bullish week and there are some green days after that but I haven't had uh, the time to look at them in more detail I will report about them as we go along uh, in the second half of the month. So uh, this is what may looks like two opportunities for dips, three opportunities tomorrow, these three days and then these three days. Uh, the most serious opportunities for dips and from there on green. Of course, it never goes up or down in a straight line, so I'm not saying that every single one of those days will be green. All I'm saying is that uh, this is the direction that uh, I visualize, that uh, from 18th of May we will definitely be on a local bull reversal. But when it uh, when will be the exactly the, the bull reversal, on what date? will we dip extremely low and then we'll make the bull reversal i do not know it could be the 9th of may even it could be tomorrow because um, it's difficult to tell because all of these days here 10th of may and 11th of may they have moon in gemini right and this is straightforward red candle however they also happen to have the moon on a very high northerly declination and uh, the 28 degrees of northerly declination of the moon is actually what shapes local tops so how do you go against that i have actually put 12th of may as a red candle day because uh, on that day the moon will be reversing from northerly to southerly declination so there is a potential there for a red candle day and also the main reason for this is the triple fire element in uh, May according to the Chinese system then a second confluence that is confirming a red candle is the metrics of the solar eclipses there are three metrics and all of them are suggesting a red candle and then I have another two metrics that are suggesting a red candle. So the 12th of May is shaping as a pretty bearish uh, day. And then the moon in Gemini on the 10th and 11th of May may produce some dips, but not necessarily very deep so the support looks very strong this month 
when Mercury goes into Taurus, he's not going to be a happy bunny. So that is why I've got here the fifth, from the 15th of May until the 17th of May, I have red candles. Main reason for that is Mercury entering Taurus. Mercury is fast, Taurus is slow, and they're not really the best of friends. So I expect that Mercury will be uncomfortable. Uh, we got 16 of May that it has a probability of uh, deep. The Sol Eclipse is uh, here, uh, suggesting red candle closure on uh, on the 17th of May. So that is another day that is suggesting a kind of a local bottom. And from there on, there is no such day in the second half of May. So these are the trends, the local trends that I expect. And uh, I'm going to do some astro accounting now to show you how May is much better month than April. That was open a minute ago and I have to find it again. So if you recall, the biggest weakness of April was Mercury and now this month we have actually a very strong Mercury in May. Mercury is fast, all planets now are moving at a fast speed, all planets are heading north on an orderly declination, except Pluto, Pluto stationed ret retrograde on the 2nd of May, that's done and dusted now. It didn't impact the market at all. The market closed on a green candle on the 2nd of May. Uh, other bullish events that are happening in May that were not present in April. Mars is in his own sign, Aries. Venus is in her own sign of Taurus. And the element of fire is back in the picture. Uh, just so to avoid confusing you, fire is a very bullish element when it is uh, in balance with the other elements but not when it's too much of it that's why for the 12th of may i said i expect a red candle because it's too much fire they triple triple that element uh, why i'm saying that the element fire is back in the picture is because may is the month of the earth snake and snake is a fire element Reasons for retracement in May are Venus is invisible and Jupiter invisible. Mars becomes more visible and Saturn is visible. I haven't written it down here, but Saturn is visible as well. So the most visible planets in May are Mars, Saturn and Moon. Mercury is also, very, uh, uh, is also visible, but not very visible but still more visible than Venus and Jupiter. Jupiter is becoming invisible on the 5th of May. A minute ago I said I'm, I'm bullish for the 5th of May, but it must be acknowledged that Jupiter is becoming invisible on the 5th of May. So again, the picture is very complex. There isn't a single day in the month that can be uh, sifted out as an extremely bearish day that can denote a, a, a dip which is deep and significant and remarkable but there are several days that are outstanding as being extremely bullish days and these are the 23rd of may we have several conjunctions on the 23rd of may venus conjunct jupiter Jupiter 60 uh, sextile to Neptune and Venus sextile to Neptune. So it's also full moon. Full moons are bullish for Bitcoin. The solar eclipse is producing different results. Two of the metrics are producing green candle probability. One of the metrics is producing red candle. Uh, the historical occurrence 
of green candles is 57% for the 23rd of May. Because of that uh, big conjunction there between Jupiter and Venus and the sextile that both of the planets are making to Neptune, that is kind of a good enough reason to expect a very green day. And then another bullish day is the 18th of May, which has three conjunctions, Sun conjunction Jupiter, Mars conjunction Rahu, and Venus conjunction Uranus. On the Moon declination that is zero, zero, tends to be a bullish day. However, one of my, actually the three of them, the three of my solar eclipses uh, metrics are suggesting a red candle closure for the 18th of May. Tw 19th of May and 20th of May have a uh, stronger probability of green candles. The solar eclipse cycles are suggesting that. We have tons of bullish degrees here that are being entered. And we have a, again zero degree of declination of the moon. We have sun uh, sextile to Neptune which is very bullish. So this section here looks like uh, small green candles, but uh, green nevertheless. The 13th of May is an outstanding um, bullish day. 69% historical green candle closures for the 13th of May. All the solar eclipse metrics are suggesting green candles closures. 66%, 78% and 69%. Tons of bullish degrees and two, one conjunction, Sun conjunction Uranus and Venus sextile Saturn. Both of these are bullish events. And the only bad thing about uh, the 13th of May is that the moon is heading on a southerly declination. So again, it's not a perfect day, but that is the only weakness of the day. Everything else is strong for the 13th of May. So the, the outstanding bullish days are better shaped and they are more than the outstanding bearish days in May. The biggest problem this month in May is that Venus is invisible and Jupiter invisible and unfortunately the visibility of the planets is very important not on daily time frames but it is important as cycles. What these um, two planets are saying is that it's going to be very difficult for us to make money. Money is not going to come easy. So something will happen and that will prevent us actually from making the money that we want to make. When Venus is invisible it also impacts love life. It weakens the juice in our love lives. It, dry, it dries the juice in our love lives and Jupiter dries, dries the juice in our abundance. Both of these planets support ease, things coming to us with ease and comfort. So again, it's not going to be easy this month. But overall it's looking much more positive than April because we have two planets in their home signs. And we have Mercury moving very direct, very fast now, uh, direct, and uh, on an orderly declination. So these, these again are very important bullish cycles. We will see which one will win. It's going to be very interesting to see how 
on one hand we have these bullish uh, movements on a nodally declination and on another hand we have Venus becoming weak becoming invisible because she is approaching her conjunction with the Sun on the 4th of June and Jupiter becoming invisible as well ah yeah and Saturn is very visible so it's very difficult to suggest serious dumping in May because uh, I'm well familiar with the saying sell in May, sell in May, sell in May we already did some selling in May uh, will we have much more selling? Uh, as I said that would be on those days here 10th to 12th or 15th to 17th and a bit on the 4th if it happens so it's very difficult to uh, tell how how deep they will dip on those days but those are the only days which are suggesting a dip very difficult to go against all of these bullish aspects and suggest that may will be a bearish month very very difficult so when I make my forecasts uh, I can never say I'm 100% sure that something will happen but uh, I question myself what is more comfortable for me to say is it more comfortable to me to say that it's going to be a bullish month or a bearish month and with all of those bullish aspects here that we're looking at tons of sex styles day after day we're full of sex styles between the planets tons of conjunctions and even throw in some trines we've got one two three four trines we've got one two three four five six sex styles that is a lot so on the basis of these I cannot say that May will be a bearish month I really can't say that I expect that May will be a very bullish month however because of those two planets Venus and Jupiter being invisible what they may bring is that uh, they may bring some very deep uh, dips and then the market continues to be bullish with those uh, deep dips that's one way that they can materialize we will see how in what way it will be difficult for us to make money in May but difficult is a guarantee when Venus is invisible and when Jupiter is invisible both of these planets are invisible but we have a very visible Saturn we have a visible Mars it's, uh, it's not um, a favorable sky it's not going to be a gentle and favorable sky so I guess it's not going to be a straightforward uh, bull run but more likely it will be interrupted by some big dips we have three bearish aspects on the background of all of those uh, bullish aspects and these uh, Venus square Pluto on the 1st of May we have Saturn 45 degrees the same square to Pluto on the 6th of May it happens early on the 6th of May and we have Mercury square to Pluto on the 17th of May so these are the only bearish aspects that are taking place in May there's nothing else so for that reason my bias is uh, bullish for May anything else extraordinary that is happening in May is uh, I expect military events on the 14th of May uh, I mentioned the meteor showers starting from the 5th of May there will be lots of opportunities to see them they will be throughout May so these are all bullish events and according to Chinese astrology May is the month of the earth snake which adds fire in the picture and uh, which is very much needed how do we know that fire is a good element for Bitcoin well broadly speaking fire represents 
drive, ambition, optimism. And uh, in the context of uh, Bitcoin market, uh, the Febru February and March were months where we had fire. So there were fire, uh, fire tiger and fire rabbit months. And now we're entering another fire month, which is the snake. But she will be an earth snake. So the earth element is suggesting problems because we're going to have a repetition of earth. We're already in the year of the earth dragon. So now having an earth snake is becoming a bit too much earth. Earth makes keeping prices low. But on the other hand, the snake is very compatible animal with the dragon. So, as you can see, we need to constantly balance bullish and bearish uh, events. I covered the planets in science. Planets in science in Gemini are very difficult to predict because Gemini is a bearish sign when it comes to moon in Gemini. Majority of the time the moon dumps in Gemini. However, the sign of Gemini has some bullish um, fixed stars there. And uh, for that reason, when those planets touch those bullish fixed stars, the market tends to pump. So I have put them on the right hand side, suggesting bearish events, uh, just to be more objective. But the likelihood is that they will be bullish because uh, the 23rd of May has some very serious uh, conjunctions and uh, sextiles. Jupiter in May, in, on the 25th of May, they're not compatible. Jupiter is the philosopher and Gemini is the accountant. A philosopher and accountant can never be compatible. But again, Jupiter will be touching bullish uh, fixed stars in Gemini. So, we'll see. For now, I have put it here in the bearish uh, column. And I discussed the visibility already. So, let me just tell you a little bit about my trading, what my plans are. And that is not financial advice. Please use your own system. I'm waiting for the market to dip before I enter long trades. Only five of my, I had 22 orders for long positions and uh, only five of them got filled. Everything else is unfilled and uh, I'm not feeling comfortable to be entering long positions at high prices and then uh, buy high and then sell higher. I know that from 18th of May the market will pump but first of all it's never 100 percent guarantee and uh, secondly as i mentioned there are a likelihood of some uh, dips between the 15th and the 17th of may and between the 10th of 12th of may and also tomorrow the 4th of may so i'm going to see what will happen tomorrow on the 4th of may before I decide uh, whether I will open some long positions on the principle buy high and sell higher. Why I'm so cautious to open those long positions is because the market is bullish only until mid-June. After mid-June, planets are turning on the southerly declination and when they turn southerly declination, they become weaker. It's only one metric. I'm not saying that after mid-June we're never going to have a bullish month until the planets turn to northerly declination again. Uh, August is looking as some kind of a temporary recovery, but July is looking as a, as a dumping month. I'm going to confirm those things. For the moment, I'm just uh, saying uh, my first impressions of those months. I will do some more detailed uh, examination of those months before I report uh, uh, them as uh, m 
more seriously. But uh, they're the main reason why I'm not that keen to enter long positions uh, on the premise of uh, buy high and sell higher. Despite the fact that I do expect from 18th of May the market to take up, to take off. Uh, because uh, if we're looking at uh, the technicals, there is no support. This is a castle in the sky. The support is very low. 39,600 is the real level of support. So it's a very difficult month again ahead of us because um, if we're waiting for this uh, dump to materialize, to bounce off the real support, that's going to be a long wait. Because you can see that uh, the Astro is bullish. The majority of the Astro in May is bullish. So the market again will behave irrationally. It will become differently to what uh, the technical analysis is suggesting. The way it did in February and in March. But nevertheless, we cannot ignore the technical uh, analysis. We really can't. Because we know this is, a, this is a picture of a castle in the sky. This is not a real sustainable market moving up. This is going to collapse at any minute. And the fact that we got um, a big red candle just for one small... On the 30th of April, all we got is that uh, Venus became invisible. That's all we got. And we got nothing else was uh, bearish on the 30th of April. So every bearish event seems to be impacting the market in a very serious way. That's because there is no support. How, in what way is this uh, 56K support? In what way is that support? It's not support in any way. So it's very difficult, another difficult month. We have to be very careful what we're doing because uh, when we buy, we're not, we don't have much long time to sell. It's May and then the first two weeks of June. And that's not guaranteed because uh, Mars will leave Aries and will enter Taurus. And Mars in Taurus is not a happy bunny. I have to do the back testing for Mars in Taurus and I'll report it in one of my next videos. Very rarely Mars in Taurus is bullish. Majority of the time Mars in Taurus dumps. And that is in June. Mars enters Taurus uh, sometime on the 7th of June. So it's very, very difficult to uh, plan a, a good uh, profitable strategy right now. If we don't enter long positions, the market will pump from the 18th and we're going to miss out on those pumps. And if we enter long positions and uh, those pumps happen to be just some uh, uh, dead cat bounces from some very big dumps on those vulnerable days that I suggested, what do we do then? And then the second half of this year is looking very bearish with a big crash in October. So by October, we need to have sold everything. I'm selling everything. All of those um, five long positions that I have, I'm going to sell them in the, in the pumps of May. Although I expect some bigger pumps in June, I just want to take my profits and uh, I want to make uh, USDT available in my account for the crash in October because in October everything will crash very, very seriously and that will be a fantastic opportunity to buy at very low prices. So my highest priority is not to get actually locked, not to be so bullish that I end up getting locked. So I have entered only a small percentage of my total uh, amount that I'm trading into long positions for the moment. And I'm already not feeling comfortable in them, but We'll see now in these next few days if the market dips lower to the 50k then I'll be entering a lot more long positions with the intention to sell them in the pumps of May, in the second half of May. 
starting from the 18th of May. Not with the intention to hold them. This is not the market. What we're looking at this year is not the market that is going to take us to the ATH in 2025. The, the new ATH. The new ATH will come. It could even come in May. It could come in August. August will present a temporary uh, recovery of the market after the dumps in July. But apart from that, September is looking bearish and uh, October is looking extremely bearish. A very big crash is expected in October. So uh, we have to be very, very careful what we're doing. So I uh, yeah, and also was going to say the first half of uh, 2025 is not easy at all. Uh, only towards the end of 2025, we will have the uh, the big pumps and uh, we want to have uh, a lot of USD available in our accounts so that when those big crashes happen we can go in at much lower prices so constantly we need to be monitoring our reasoning and uh, our sanity and this is it from me for today. In my next video, I'll cover the solar eclipses back testing, which has produced some lovely, significant results. I'm very proud of that research. And uh, we'll catch up with you soon. Bye bye.